Well, hello again. Welcome again to another one of my podcasts, Down to Earth but Heavenly Minded. I'm your host, Irv Rish. And I thought I'd take a break from doing all those writings by uh, F.B. Hole. And I thought we'd just take a look at the bio of Charles Henry McIntosh. And uh, I have a reason for doing this. And uh, I'll be right back with uh, his bio, and I will tell you my reason. So hang in there. Well, before I even get into... uh, (laughs) Uh, the article here on uh, uh, Charles Henry McIntosh. Let me uh, just tell you this. If you haven't noticed, uh, I have been doing uh, all these different writings by all these different authors, and every one of them has something to do with the Brother and Movement from back in the 1800s, early 1900s. And uh, that's, and and when when you see this article, you'll realize why I have been doing this. Let me just uh, make a little adjustment here. Uh, Let's see here. See if I can make myself a little smaller so I'm not covering up the text. I can leave myself on the screen that way. Well, let me just read this uh, bio. Of, and there's really not much of a bio because there's not a whole lot of uh, history on uh, Charles Henry McIntosh as far as his uh, life. But he was a great author. Now, of all the groups of Christian believers that developed in the English-speaking world in the 19th century, should have been in the 1800s, uh, the one which produced the greatest number of gifted writers was the Brethren. Now, I'm affiliated with the Brethren uh, in the aspect that I meet, just like they did. They meet around the Lord's table. That's the main meeting, but then they have teaching those that expound the Word of God. Charles uh, McIntosh was one of them. It goes on to say, of their founders himself, who was John Nelson Darby, by the way, over 50 sustaining volumes uh, were published. But of all the notable groups of writers, the one whose work has been uh, most frequently printed is Charles Henry McIntosh, generally known as CHM, which is which all appears on his title pages of his major writings. Now, C.H. McIntosh was born in October 1820 in Glenmute Barracks, County Wicklow, Ireland, the son of a captain of a highly Highland regiment, McIntosh was converted at the age of 18 uh, through the letters of a devoted sister and the prayerful reading of John Nelson Darby, Operation of the Spirit. When he was 24 years of age, he opened a private school at West Point, Westport, but it was not long before he concluded he must give himself entirely to the ministry of the Word of God. In writing and in public speaking, soon thereafter, he felt led to establish a periodical, which he continued to edit for 21 years, in the name of that was things new and old. Mr. McIntosh took great interest in the actively participating in the great revival of 1859 and 1860. He died on November 2nd, 1896. It was two years before my father was born. 
and he was born in 1899, three years, and was buried in Chellingham Cemetery awaiting the resurrection morn. Now that more than 100 years have passed, and it's about 120-some years now uh, since his death, it is difficult to come upon much uh, factual details concerning his own personal life. He was a man of much mild spirit than J. Nelson Darby, and... uh, breathe an atmosphere of deep devotion and the love, not only for Christian believers, but for lost souls. He had a genuine spirit, avoiding conflict as far as possible. Mr. McIntosh frame rests primarily upon the work, notes on the Pentateuch. And I believe I got most of these on, on my channel, YouTube channel. And I'm going to probably end up redoing them. That was old technology back then. Uh, beginning with the volumes of 334 pages on Genesis and concluding with two volume works on Deuteronomy, extending over 800 pages. Another series by Mr. McIntosh also frequently reprinted under the general heading of miscellaneous writings, which I have most of those, seven volumes totaling over 2,500 pages, and most, it's still definitely worth reading. Let me especially call attention to Mr. McIntosh's excellent comment on evangelism, which seems to be remarkable up to date in this time, and it's actually in our time too, when we are witnessing so much worldwide evangelism. In volume four, it is very, very through uh, illumination and sensible discussion of uh, uh, 90 pages on the Great Commission of Luke 24, verses 44 through 49. His statement at the very beginning are referred to, are, are refreshing to read, I'm sorry. And here's a clip from that. Our divine master called upon sinners to repent and to believe the gospel. Some would have us to believe that it is a mistake to call upon persons dead in trespasses and sins and do nothing. How, it is argued, can those who are dead repent? They are incapable of spiritual movement. They must first get the power, air. They can either repent or believe. When is our, uh, what is our reply to all this? A very simple one indeed. Our Lord knows better than all the theologians in the world, what ought to be preached. He knows all about man's conditions, his guilt, his misery, his spiritual death, his utter helplessness, his total inability to think a single right thought, to utter a single right word, or to do a single right act. And yet he calls upon men to repent. This is quite enough for us. It is no part of our business to seek to reconcile seemingly difficult. It may seem to us difficult to reconcile man's utterance, utter powerlessness with his responsibility, but God in his own interpretation, and he will make it plain It is our happy privilege and our uh, bound duty to believe what he says. Uh, He said to do what he tells us. This is true wisdom, and it is yielding solid peace. Our Lord preached repentance, and he commanded his apostles 
to preach it. And so they continued continually. Because many of the teachers otherwise our rejoice to see the author's emphasis on the need for genuine repentance. In volume three, there is a section uh, of 86 pages uh, with the general heading, Papers on Evangelism, in the midst of which is a long and excellent a commentary of Acts 16, verses 8 through 31. A few lines from this rich page. We increasingly, we increasingly feel the immense importance of the earnest, fervent gospel testimony everywhere. And we dread exceedingly any falling off therein. We are imperatively called to do the work of an evangelist and not to be moved from that work by any argument or considerations whatsoever. We observe with deep concern some who were once known among us as earnest and eliminating lecture, I'm sorry, successive Successful evangelists now among almost wholly abandoned their work and became teachers and lecturers. This was kind of sad. This is most deplorable. Uh, we really want evangelists. A true evangelist is almost as great a rarity as a true pastor. Alas, alas. How rare are both the two are closely connected. We are perfectly aware of the fact that there is some quarters a strong tendency to throw cold water upon the work of evangelism. Evangelization. There is a sad lack of sympathy with the preacher of the gospel and as a necessary consequence the active cooperation with him in his work. We have invariably found that those who think and speak slightly of the work of evangelism are persons of very little spirituality. And on the other hand, the most devoted the most true-hearted, the best-taught saints of God are always sure to take a profound interest in that work. But I find in the Gospel and in the Acts of the Apostles that the quality of most blessed evangelist work has been done by persons who are not specifically gifted at all, but who had an earnest love for souls and a deep sense of preciousness of Christ and his salvation. In the midst of these papers, our author discusses what I think is a very rare in his writings, his own participation in a great revival of 1859 in uh, Ulster. And that's uh, kind of the article, and the above was borrowed and abbreviated from an article specifically written by Dr. Smith for the one volume uh, in Genesis to Deuteronomy Notes on the Pentateuch. So with that read and said, I'm just going to end uh, what we have now, and I'll be back with you probably with another article by if be whole. But I just wanted you to be aware of this great man, Charles Henry McIntosh, better known as C.H.M. Bye for now.